everyone, welcome to my channel, 10 Ways to Wear It. I'm Alicia and on this channel, I take one fashion item or one fashion trend and show you all 10 different ways to wear it. Now, one thing that I like to do when a new year approaches is to reflect on the past year and think about what things I would like to do differently. I'm not so much into resolutions, but I'm definitely into goals and also into reflecting on that past year and making changes so that the current new year can be better. So today's video is all about the things that I personally will not be doing in 2023. And this video is more about me than anything, but I'm hoping that a lot of you can relate. So if you want to hear about the 10 things that I will not be doing in 2023 so that I can have the most successful year possible, let's go ahead and get right into this video. We got some tea to spill. <laughs> So the first thing that we will not be doing in 2023 is super important and that is we will not be not taking care of ourselves. We are going to step it up when it comes to taking care of ourselves physically, emotionally, spiritually, in every way possible, okay? We have to take better care of ourselves. One thing I've had to admit recently is that you cannot eat garbage every day and expect to be healthy in your old age. You just can't especially these days what they're doing to our food you have to try as hard as you can to have somewhat of a decent diet now for me personally i restrict myself during the week so monday through friday i try to eat very healthy okay i'm very choosy about what i put into my body i'm very picky about it but on the weekends i indulge moderately i don't go crazy i'm not gonna sit up and eat a whole cake like i've done in the past but I do indulge a little bit more on the weekend so that I have something to look forward to. I find joy in eating. I'm one of those people that really finds a good time in sitting down to good food. So I have to have some type of leeway when it comes to eating. So the weekends is when I kind of indulge and really enjoy myself. But during the week, I drink my green juice, I eat salads, I might eat some rice or some noodles or here and there, but most of the diet that I practice during the week is pretty healthy. And that's because I've accepted that, you know, I wanna live to old age, I wanna be healthy, I wanna be mobile, I wanna feel good even in my old age. And now that I'm in my 40s, I gotta really address my diet. So you guys need to jump on that train with me, okay? We cannot just feed our bodies crap. We need to be more conscious of what we're feeding our bodies and what we're doing to our bodies. I know I've shared in the past videos that I use some products that I shouldn't use. I have a new video coming for you all. I'm really trying to use cleaner products on my body and everything. So your girl is making some serious changes and I'm gonna be sharing it all with you all in case you want to get on this train and this journey with me of just taking overall better care of yourself. But um, yeah, not taking care of ourselves, we're not doing that in 2023, okay? On to the next one. So the next thing that we are not doing in 2023 is being financially illiterate. I spent a lot of my adulthood being financially illiterate. I heard words like investment and property investments and REITs and things like that, but I never really took the time to learn about them. And what I've had to accept is that my nine to five retirement is not going to be enough for the lifestyle that I want for myself when I retire. So I have to step it up. So I would encourage you all to do the same. Read books about financial literacy, listen to podcasts, follow pages that are about finances and things like that, and really take the time to invest in yourself so that you can learn as much as you can about finances. It's super, super important. Like it's more important than it's ever been, honestly. And if you think that you have social security to depend on when you get older, they're saying that social security will not exist in a few more years because the generate the social security is built by generations paying into it. And what's happening is the younger generations, they're not working those standard jobs that pay into social security. In fact, a lot of them are entrepreneurs or a lot of them just aren't even working at all. So they're not paying into social security. So my generation will more than likely not have that as a resource. You know, it used to be you could look for that, you know, 1500 to 2000, maybe to cover some of your mortgage and stuff like that. No, you are on your own. So you have your retirement, your investments, and your savings to depend on. And so this is the time that we really need to educate ourselves financially, learn as much as we can. I've been reading some really great financial books that I wanna share with you all. This one is called The Black Girl's Guide to Financial Freedom. And just because it's written by a black girl doesn't mean other women can't read it, but it's a really good book about finances. And I really like the way it's written. It's an easy read and it helps you learn a lot about investing in property, learning about REITs, learning about, you know, basic investments, index funds, things like that. Also this one, 
the side hustle guide this is a really really great book to encourage you to find a side hustle to make more money from than just your nine to five we all have special talents that we have that we can make money off of this one i've shared with you all in the past we should all be millionaires by rachel rogers and also the workbook that comes along with it this is a really really great book about finances and it's another really easy read that you can kind of breeze through because i hate financial books but these are actually pretty interesting and if i didn't share um this book the side hustle guide is by bola sukumbi and this one the black girl's guide to financial freedom is by paris wood so i'll link all of these below the last one i have to share with you all is by tiffany alish and this is called get good with money this is a really great book as well really good reads to help you learn more about investments reads property investments things like that all the options that are out there to really get yourself in a great financial position i'm trying to do it and i would encourage y'all don't get left behind okay don't get left behind we are not being financially illiterate in 2023 we are educating ourselves the next thing we are no longer doing in 2023 and maybe you haven't been doing this but i'm guilty of it is waiting for other people to do things that we really want to do um, the truth is some people want you to kiss their ass to do stuff. I'm sorry, excuse my language, but there's no other way to say it. Some people want you to literally kiss their ass to do stuff with them, like ask them over and over. We're not doing that anymore. Some people are just plain flaky. You really can't depend on them. We're not depending on them anymore, okay? Yes, we want to do things with our loved ones, our friends, our family members, and things like that, but the day is gone that you wait for them or literally base your actions on them because people are just not reliable. So we're not doing that anymore in 2023 we are not waiting for other people to do the things that we really want to do whether that's travel whether that's just a new experience it could be going to dinner somewhere different it could be going to a concert we're not waiting for people and yes you always want to be safe when you're doing things especially by yourself um, you know, circumstantial awareness is very important. Always be aware of your surroundings and what's going on and prepare for anything. But at the same time, you gotta live your life, okay? We're not waiting for people anymore in 2023. So tell them peace out and do what you gotta do. The next thing that we are no longer doing in 2023 is not vocalizing our needs and our boundaries in our relationships. And that goes for every relationship. Coworkers, friends, your spouse, your neighbors, whoever it is time to start speaking up for yourself and vocalizing your needs and your boundaries if there's something you need from your children vocalize it stop sitting on it it's unhealthy if there's something you need from your spouse that you're not getting vocalize it speak up or if somebody is like tampering on the lines of boundaries that are important to you or you feel like they're taking advantage of you or they're just doing too much and it's making you uncomfortable vocalize it we are no longer staying quiet on our needs and our boundaries in our relationships especially if you know that you're the kind of person who goes that extra mile and gives the best you can and does the best you can in your relationships you're a dependable co-worker you're a dependable friend you're a good spouse you do everything you can maybe you're not perfect but you do the best you can if you know you're that person don't sit quiet on the things that you need and especially don't sit quiet on your boundaries because the more people cross your boundaries and push past your boundaries, if you're not telling them, they may not even know. But secondly, they may know, but they could just be testing you to see how far they can go. So it's important for you to speak up. In 2023, we are not staying quiet about our needs and our boundaries in our relationships. We are speaking up, okay? Speak up, y'all. Okay, so this next one is a good one. And this one, like I said, is very specific to me, but I'm sure some of you ladies out there can relate. In 2023, we are no longer shopping mindlessly and impulsively. We are actually planning for our wardrobe when we shop and you all know that i've been on a journey to build a more sustainable and a more useful wardrobe and just an overall very stylish wardrobe i felt like a lot of the pieces that i had were junk and that came from minus mindlessly and impulsively shopping honestly i built this huge wardrobe that pretty much wasn't even useful because i was reaching for the same things over and over and just had a lot of items that were collecting dust now i sleep on it before i buy like Pretty much things that are gonna be over $100, I definitely have to sleep on it overnight to see if I'm still thinking about that thing a day or two later. Also, I create outfit ideas. So I've shared that in past videos. I use photos to create outfits and I also write out my outfits. So that helps me when I'm shopping to know like, do I need this item? Do I want this item? And how am I gonna wear this item? And the last thing that I do is really make sure that the item is good quality 
and that it works for my current style. So if the item doesn't work for me, I return it right away. Because another thing that I used to do in the past is keep items that should have been returned. Like literally the return window would close and I would say, why didn't I take this back? I meant to take this back. I didn't want it or it didn't fit or it just doesn't work for my style anymore. I would do that so much and so I would end up giving away a lot of brand new items. So I would encourage you all, before you make purchases, sleep on it. If you're still thinking about that item, maybe you should go ahead and buy it. Also create outfit ideas use photos to do that or you can write them down like i do and make sure that the items that you are deciding to add to your wardrobe fit with your style fit your body well and that will work for you and if not make sure you return them on time before that return window closes okay but yeah that's my advice y'all no more mindless impulsive shopping and spending our money we need to really protect our coins this year there's a lot going on and the way the government is giving away money honey we really gotta watch out. So another thing that I've decided that I'm no longer doing in 2023, and this is something that I kinda started practicing at the end of 2021, is I'm no longer saving my outfits for special occasions. Like I will put on a Fit Fit just to go to Costco. Because you know what, running errands is like, our social life a lot of the times these days, especially for me, I'm not the kind of person that runs the streets a lot. I'm not your average fashion blogger, you know, that's always out doing some event or this or that. I'm usually in the house unless I'm like running errands or going to see my parents or my family or something like that. I'm usually in the house. So when I do step out to go do something, even if it is running a simple errand, I will get dressed to do that. I certainly will, okay? I am no longer saving my outfits for special occasions. Now, I'm not gonna say I'm gonna go put on a bomb dress or something just to go run to Target, but I will put on like a nice dress or, you know, some cute sneakers with it or something like that. I don't save my stuff. Like I don't look at my stuff six months from now and it still has the tag on it. I try to wear it almost as soon as I get it, whether it's for a date night or just something. If I'm going out of the house, it's like, why not wear this? You know, I can dress cute. So don't save your stuff anymore. If you buy something, put it on, wear it, find an occasion to wear it. And if you don't have an occasion, wear it to Target, wear it to Costco, wear it to the grocery store, wear it to the library, <laughs> wherever you're going. I'm sure y'all are going somewhere. Wear your clothes. This next one is a really good one, y'all. So another thing that I will not be doing in 2023 is following useless, unhealthy accounts on social media. My thing is, if the account that I'm following is not educating me in some way, inspiring me in some way, or benefiting me in some way, I'm going to unfollow you, okay? And that could even go for me. Maybe my content is no longer benefiting you. Like, I would encourage you to do what's best for you. And if the content isn't inspiring, educating, or benefiting you, why are you observing absorbing it okay it's just not healthy for you all if you following accounts that are biased that are triggering for you that are toxic and unhealthy and negative that energy is around you you might think it's just on a screen and it's not touching your life but that energy is affecting you in some way and you have to protect your energy these days so like i said if the account that you're following is not inspiring you benefiting you or educating you in some kind of way if you're not getting something from it something healthy from from it then you need to stop following it if you see an account and every time you see it you're just like this girl is just you know an empty shell and you know like what is what is the point of this it's probably time that you unfollow that account and rather than continuously leaving them negative comments because that's even more negativity that you're putting out into your realm then I would just say unfollow it. Like just get it out of your psyche, get it out of your mind, get it out of your rotation and follow accounts that benefit you, whatever they might be. Just make sure that you're not bringing that bad energy into your life by following accounts that are useless and that just are not helping you in any way. Another thing that we are not doing in 2023, and this may be triggering for some of y'all out there, is being tethered to our phones. Now, when I say tethered to your phones, I mean like you're just always down in your phone on social media or always just on your phone doing something. The truth is you're probably the most boring person to be around if that's you and nobody's actually saying anything to you because you're always in your phone. You're not engaging, you're not in the moment, you're not creating memories. Now y'all know I'm a documenter, so I use my phone to record what's going on around me, but that doesn't mean I'm not engaged with what's going around me. Y'all have seen my vlogs, y'all know I'm having a good time while I'm filming everybody and everything like that. 
But if you're just the kind of person that's just not engaging in conversation, always in your phone, trust me, you're boring to be around. People are just tolerating you, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all, but it's the truth. Being tethered to your phone like every minute or just feeling like you gotta be on the phone all the time, like, I, I'm not, one thing I've realized, I'm not that much of a phone person like that anymore. Like I would rather be in a book or watching a movie or with my friends, I'd rather be with them than on the phone. I know, I, I know that's not always possible. I love my friends a lot and they're just so cool to be around. They're just such good women. And so I would rather be with them in person, like than always on the phone like that. You know, I really wish I could spend more time with them and that's something that I'm gonna work on. But yeah, being tethered to your phones in 2023, we're not doing all that, okay? Um, like I said, you know, if you're that person that's just always in your phone and a person asking you questions and then they gotta repeat, repeat everything they say because you don't hear them, you're whack. <laughs> sorry, y'all. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay? But no more being tethered to the phones in 2023. Let's live, let's engage, let's be in the moment, y'all. All right, so this next one is kind of another personal one for me, but I'm hoping that some of you out there can actually relate to it. And one thing that I will not be doing anymore in 2023 and beyond is talking myself out of nice things. I have this weird thing that when I want something and it costs over a certain amount, I start to like get critical and like figure out a way to convince myself that I don't need that thing or that I don't deserve that thing. That's really the root of it. The root of it is that I feel like I don't deserve that thing. And the truth of it is that I actually really do. Because a lot of us, we deserve the whole world. We may not ever get it, but we deserve more. And so what I'm gonna stop doing is talking myself out of nice things. It's not like I buy myself nice things all the time. When I say nice things, I mean nice things. A dinner that may cost three, $400, a nice bag, um, real jewelry that's like real gold or diamonds. Why shouldn't I have those things? Especially when I can afford them. I work for it. I work my butt off. Stop convincing yourself that you don't deserve nice things. And whatever the excuses that you're giving yourself, the root of it is that you really don't feel you deserve it. And the truth is you probably do deserve it, okay? Because a lot of us are just really, really working our butts off. We've given so much, we've been through so much, and we deserve more out of life. And so if you can give yourself more without hurting other areas of your life, meaning don't you know blow your budget on something nice, but if you can afford it, if you can fit it in, do something nice for yourself sometimes. Like you don't always have to just go eat at some cheap restaurant. You can go and spend some money on a nice dinner for yourself sometimes, buy yourself a nicer bottle of wine. Like it can relate to anything, honestly, it really can. Buy yourself the nicer seats at a concert, spend a little bit more money for that. You deserve nice things and stop convincing yourself that you don't. So no more talking ourselves out of nice things in 2023. Okay, so we are on our last tip of what we will not be doing in 2023. And this one is very important and also very personal to me. So this thing that I will not be doing anymore in 2023 is being hard on myself and being cruel to myself. One thing I have learned is that I'm very, very hard on myself and I've learned that I need to be more gentle with myself, more forgiving, more kind, just like I am with other people. I'm extremely forgiving, I'm extremely open and kind to other people. I look over mistakes that they might have made and things that they've done wrong to me. But when it comes to doing it for myself, I can be very, very hard on myself. And how you're hard on yourself, when I say that, I'm not like slapping myself or beating myself up. I mean like negative thoughts, negative words, you know, um, Thinking, thinking thoughts that like, oh, you're so stupid, why did you do that? Or girl, you just can never get anything right. Or that is ridiculous, that idea is ridiculous, that looks ridiculous, this is awful. Sometimes I cringe when I watch my videos, but what I am doing these days is watching my videos and saying positive things throughout the entire video, things that look good, things that make sense that I say, oh, that's a good point. Not saying them out loud, because you don't want to talk too much to yourself out loud, but really thinking those thoughts and those positive things, and it helps so much. We really have to learn to be more gentle with ourselves. Like, if you think about it, if you think about the number of negative thoughts you have per day, it's like thousands concerning yourself. It's like thousands. You look in the mirror, you're like, oh my God, my hair look crazy, or I look this, I look that. Like all of that really does affect how we feel about ourselves and it re affects our reality, okay? Because thoughts, what you think, it creates the reality around you. 
Whether we want to believe that or not, it's the truth. And so we have to be really careful and we have to learn to be gentler, kinder, and more forgiving with ourselves, more forgiving of mistakes we've made, let go of negative things in the past that we may have done that we didn't get quite right. We got to let those things go. Okay. And be more kind to ourselves in 2023. So Honey, I am no longer being hard on myself. I'm no longer being cruel to myself. I tell myself I'm beautiful every morning. I tell myself my, my environment is beautiful. I'm blessed. I'm happy. I just give myself so many positive affirmations. And the truth is practice makes perfect. And that whole thing about, you know, say it until you believe it or fake it until you make it. It's real. It's real. I'm living proof of that, y'all. So no more cruelty and no more being hard on ourselves in 2023. We're done with that. Thank you all so much for checking out this video all about the 10 things I will not be doing in 2023 in order to have the most successful year possible. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. I love doing these kind of videos and sitting down with you all. And I got some new content coming for y'all this year. I really want to start sitting down more and chit chatting with you guys, particularly about the shows that I like to watch. So stay tuned for some of that and more cooking videos, of course. And y'all know the fashion videos are going to stay coming. So I got a lot of new stuff coming for y'all that I think is going to be a lot of fun. So many changes, but many great things coming in 2023. Take my advice from this video, make it the best year possible, protect yourself, protect your energy, and just really go out there and get it, girlfriend. Okay. We got this. I'll see you all on the next one. Love you. Bye.